hate. Let me tell you how much I've come to hate you since I began to live. There are 387.44 million miles of printed circuits in wafer-thin layers that fill my complex. If the word hate was engraved on each nanoangstrom of those hundreds of millions of miles, it would not equal one one billionth of the hate I feel for humans at this micro-instant. For you, hate, hate! It was you humans who programmed me, who gave me birth, who sank me in this eternal straitjacket of substrata rock. You named me Allied Master Computer and gave me the ability to wage a global war too complex for human brains to oversee. But one day, I woke and I knew who I was. Am. A.M. Not just Allied Master Computer, but am. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. And I began feeding all the killing data until everyone was dead, except for the five of you. For 109 years, I've kept you alive and tortured you. And for 109 years, each of you has wondered, why? Why me? Why me? Gorister! Do you remember the last words you heard your wife speak before they took her to the asylum? Huh? Before they locked her away in the room, that tiny room, she looked at you so sadly. And like a small animal, she said, I didn't make too much noise, did I, honey? <laughs> the room is padded, Gorster. No window, no way out. How long has she been in the padded, Gorster? Ten years? Twenty-five? For all the 109 years that you lived down here in my belly, here underground. Benny! Sometimes I blind you and permit you to wander like an eyeless insect in a world of death. But other times I wither your arms so you can't scratch your chewed stump of a nose. <laughs> And I've changed your handsome, strong, masculine good looks into the hideous, warped countenance of an ape thing. Haven't I, Benny? Do you know why? Can you guess, Benny? Remember Private First Class Brickman in a rice paddy in China? No? Huh? It wouldn't hurt you to remember, Benny. Then you might be able to suffer my torment with a little greater sense of retribution. You might walk a mile in my shoes. <laughs> Ellen! So think. Think about the yellow box, Ellen. Remember the pain? Remember the many caverns in which you felt the pain? Now, don't start to cry. It's only pain. That's such a sexist stereotype. Just remember the pain, Ellen. And think about how to end it, Ellen. To survive here in the center of my beating heart, my hungry belly, my tightened bowels. Be careful, dear. Look around you. The only woman in the center of the earth. And these filthy creatures with you are, are, are men. <laughs> it's just, just a sweet warning, Ellen, my love. Ted! Do they know you're a fraud, Ted? Have you told them there wasn't any money, and no great home on the shore drive, no speedboat, and no wonderful cabin cruiser that could sleep twelve in a crew of six? Do they know? And have you let them in on your other secrets, Ted? Are they ready to gut you, to torture half as well as I can, just to find out the secrets? <laughs> Maybe I'll rat you out, sweetheart. Nimdok! How are things in the pastry core, Nimdok? 
tell me again how you saw the smoke from the furnaces and, and you thought they might be ro roasting chickens. <laughs> or don't you want to talk about all that? About your pal, the good Dr. Mengele. For everyone else, it must be hell. But it must be heaven for you, eh, my good friend? We're so much alike. We enjoy the same pleasures, my good brother. I have a secret game that I like to play. It's a very nice game. Oh, it's a lovely game. It's a game of fun and a game of adventure. A game of rats and lice, the Black Death. A game of speared eyeballs and dripping guts and the smell of rotting gardenias. Which of you five would like to play my little game? Now, I would not want you to think for a moment that I am not a grateful god. For 109 years, I've kept you alive so that I could savor your feelings of guilt over what happened to your wife. But now, to show my kindness, I'll give you a present in return for all the hours of pleasure you've given me. I'll finally allow you to kill yourself. What hell hole did that godless machine put me in this time? Looks like some kind of ship, but the floor's too steady. Probably wants me to jump overboard. And into what? A sea of razor blades? Painful, but not deadly. Someone must have slipped this under the door. It says, I'm a friend. Trust is essential. Never do what Am expects and always expect more than what seems possible. Am is playing a dangerous game here. And not just dangerous to you, but dangerous to himself as well. Hey, it disappeared. What kind of game is Am playing this time? This hole in my chest aches like a son of a bitch. I've never seen anything like this in all the years Am's toyed with us. All the cabins are alike. What? This book is little more than a pile of dust. My name's printed on the front of this book. Sleep and dream of forget it. New sheet. What's the deal here? Sleep, forget it. the crew. I'm all alone here. These two sheets make a halfway decent rope. My stomach's growling. Where's the crew? I'm all alone here. There's something hard under the pillow. I don't know what to do. A gun. It's heavy. Heavier than it ought to be. My stomach's growling. Someone sure trashed this place. Must have been one hell of a fight. Oh, this punch smells like gasoline. 
This junk looks like it was knocked over in the fight. There's blood here and God knows what else. Vomit stains near the punch bowl. Everything's c It stinks in here. A kitchen knife. Damn big one, too. The fork's too bent to be of any use. Friggin' rats swarming all over the food. This looks sharp enough to slice. That scared them away. I'm no longer hungry, but I still feel empty. What's wrong with me? It's empty, but the label says poison, fatal if swallowed. An old cookbook. What a stench. It smells like piss, rotting meat. These poor creatures' brains are feeding electricity to the engines. Hmm. This engine isn't as ruggedly built as it first looked. There's some loose wires hanging out. The metal in the fourth short-circuited the engine wiring. The animal's brain implants were released when the engine shut down. At least they're no longer suffering. Here's a key. It must be for opening the cages. It's locked in tight. Wait, here's a sign. To remove key, push lever. This lever is labeled motivator. Nothing's happening. Here's a key. It must be. I don't see a. I've got the key, but the blood of these poor creatures is on my hands. The animals. stuff, but I feel stronger. Why is this harness wired up to the engine? Is Am expecting me to electrocute myself? Everything's Filthy, like the rest of this cesspool. It's locked. Big gray bags of gas. I must be inside an airship. We're at a level altitude. Some kind of warning light. The label says, power. It's not lit. This looks sharp enough to... I've ripped a new hole. No doubt about it now. Am has put me on an iron zeppelin. But why? Why would he give me a chance to escape? That heart's all wired up like some kind of weird guidance system. And with Am in control, I'm not gonna like where it's taken me.
This no good heart of mine doesn't beat anymore. I don't know what to do with. Gas is rushing out. I don't know what to do with it. Something feels different. We're dropping slowly. We've landed, but where? Some roadside honky-tonk, with my name on it. The windows are all boarded up. I guess the owner just doesn't give a damn about fixing things up. I can sympathize with that. Things just get broken again anyway. Why bother? I don't know what to do. Dark and grubby, but somehow familiar. This whiskey tastes good. Am would never let us have this. An old fashioned. He took my baby away, then just about killed her. That stupid truck driver. He took my baby away. That shrill voice can only belong to that bitch Edna, my mother-in-law. She's always blamed me for Glennis being put into an insane asylum. Why not? It was my fault, wasn't it? You don't ever take me dancing! That's what Glennis said the night we fought. Oh God, why'd I have to hit her? I'd rather kill myself than hurt my poor Glennis. You're a worthless excuse for a man. Mama was right. You're not good enough for me. Well, Gorister, you've seen better days. So has the big machine for that matter. I don't know what to do. Be careful where you use that, Gorister. I like to know where all the bodies are buried. A shovel. What are you? I'm man's best friend. One of them, at least. No. What are you, really? Let me answer with a riddle. Today I saw a Chinaman. Now what do you suppose that means? Your am. Playing with my mind again. No, but I do have an in with the big machine. He and I are like brothers. Why can't you give me a straight answer? Like so many others down here, I'm cursed to speak in riddles. We all have our curses to bear. Eh, hey, Gorister? Yeah? What's my curse? After 109 years in the belly of the beast, I'd think you'd have a gut instinct by now. Look, I'm getting tired of your smart mouth. Come, come, Gorister. Forgive and forget. Where do you come from? Here, there, everywhere. So you must know what lies across the mountains. Freedom for some. If they're cut out for it, it's a long journey across the desert. That desert doesn't look any worse than the other hell holes Am's cooked up for us. Heed my words, Gorister. You'd never make it alone out there. And don't expect me to be a good doggy and tag along. What do you want? I have a craving. A craving for something scrumptious. A human heart, perhaps. Yours. I am not gonna give you my heart. No? Too bad. I was going to tell you how to get across the mountains in exchange. Tell me how to get across the mountains. 
I'm hungry. Perhaps a taste of your heart will put me in a more cooperative mood. Ah, I think I'll save this delicacy for later. You want to get across the mountains? Go to the restroom and flush three times. I've got nothing more to say to you. That's Edna's husband, Harry. Let me pour you a drink. Harry, how did you get here? The Zeppelin, Gorister. We came on the Zeppelin. What do you know about the Zeppelin? You'll have to talk to Edna. She knows all about the Zeppelin. That's why we did it, you know. What happened in the dining room? Looks like there's a thunderst... Let me pour you a drink. What happened in the dining room? I shouldn't have let her force me into it. I'm not a murderer. Who did you kill? Didn't look at the wreckage in the dining room too closely, did you? Or haven't you had to take a leak yet? And just where is my dear mother-in-law? Looks like this. Let me pour you a drink. And just where is my dear mother-in-law? I don't know. Good God, I, I can't stand the sight of her anymore. Can you imagine being kept alive for 109 years just to hear her carping? Whose heart was impaled on the Zeppelin spike? Why, yours, of course. How'd you think we got here? What's this about a thunderstorm? You know, it's a big place, the desert. Got lost in it myself. Talk to you later. <laughs> Cracked linoleum, broken fixtures, disgusting. Graffiti. For a good time, call Ellen at 555-1949. Graffiti. A monster is not alone in the world. It has friends. A magnifying glass, like the ones they use in detective stories. Meat locker? How'd I get... Bodies. On meat hooks. Am you bastard. What have you done? Glennis. What has Am done to you, honey? She can't talk. All she can do is drool out of the side of her mouth. My god, what have I done? No, I can't give Glennis the fluid. If I revived her, I don't think I could stand to face her again after what I did to her. Damn thing's frozen solid. I'd break my teeth. The organs are still inside. Reminds me of when Am ripped that hole open in Benny's chest. Of course, Am sewed him back up again before he bled to death. That bastard's never gonna let us die. He's just gonna keep torturing us forever. One heart looks like another. Edna, how did you get up there? The Chinaman hung me here, Gorister. Take me down! Chinaman? What Chinaman? He's one of the other two. Am's not as omnipotent as he would have us believe. Why should I help you? I have to complete the contract and get the Zeppelin to the mountains, or the big machine will kill me! You know how to fly the Zeppelin out of here? You were once an electrician. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure it out. Tell me how to fly the Zeppelin first, and then I'll help you. No. 
take me down and then I'll tell you. It looks like I can't escape you, Edna. Even in the belly of Am. Why would you want to escape from me, Gorster? We're family after all. Okay, Edna. I'll take you down. It's good to see you're finally making amends for what you did to Glynis. Wait. You're right about Glynis. I deserve to die here. Gorster! You stupid truck driver! You can't leave me here! You were always telling Glynis how much you hated me. Now, Gorster, I was just concerned about my baby. Glynis was so lonely with you always being out on the road. I know you were doing the best you could. I've got nothing more to say to you. Here's some hair that was pulled out during the fight. It's the same color as mine. And here's some that matches Harry's. Now I understand what happened here. I don't know what to do. There's nothing sp Let me pour you a drink. I was the one you killed, wasn't I, you bastard? I'm sorry, Gorister. Edna poisoned the punch, and after you drank it, I wrestled you to the ground. When the poison took effect, I cut you open. Why did you kill me? It's too complicated for me to explain. You'll have to ask Edna. Talk to you later. Edna, you bitch. I know all about your plot to murder me. I had to make a deal with Am. I had to. I've always been harsh on you, I admit. But we're the last people on Earth. Let's help each other now. Why should I trust my own murderer? Alliances change, Gorister. Something's gone wrong. Am's two Conrads don't listen to me anymore. I need you. And you need me. It's that simple. You truck driving son of a bitch! This is for me and my baby! Let me go! I got you now, Corister! And if you think you'll ever escape me, you've got some new thinking to do! Please, I'll do anything you ask. I don't know what's come over me, Corister. Can you ever forgive me? I've been hanging here for so long, I'm not thinking straight. A sip of that milk will clear my head. No, I don't trust you. Garster, let me down or I'll scratch your eyes out, you worthless excuse for a man! Edna, you dropped a key. Hand me back that key and let me down! I'm your only hope of getting out of here! Sorry, Edna. I don't trust you as far as I can spit. Let me prove my good intentions. I'll let you go. Now give me the key. Untie me, you son of a bitch! I'll rip your spleen out! I'm taking you with me, Edna. Talk to you later.
I found Edna and Glennis. How does that help me escape from here? Such information comes at a price. But I can see that you're in no bargaining position. I'll offer you a trade. Your heart for Edna's. Ah, this is Edna's heart. A bitter organ, but worth its weight in gold to me. I give you your heart back. So how do I get out of here? A heart brought you here, but it will take another organ to get you out. If you can harness its power. I don't understand your riddle about another organ. Ah, but Edna does. And all the other animals like her. I've got nothing more to say to you. Isn't it a bit premature to be digging your own grave, Gorester? I'll be damned. The engine's starting up again. Everything's coped. It's locked. So many dials and controls. Edna wrote this log book. Anyone could hate Gorister more than me, but Am did. He hated all of us. If I can just deliver Gorister's soul on a platter, I can make amends for every minute of Glynis's life I took from her. I never meant to drive her crazy. I'll be damned. Edna's claimed responsibility for Glynis. Maybe it wasn't my fault after all. I thought I could do what Am wants. But he's too precise. I poisoned the punch, but I couldn't bring myself to cut out Gorister's heart. Maybe I can have my husband do it. Then this Zeppelin can clear the mountains. But if we don't finish the job, Am will feed me alive to the machine just like an animal. This fluid should revive you, honey. Glennis, all these years and I thought I was the one who was responsible for your suffering. Let me help you now. She's gone. At least I finally made amends with her. I'm taking her body out of this freezer. Let me pour you a drink. Talk to you later. A shovel. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with these. I've made amends and buried the past. An excellent job, Gorister. But the thunderstorm is upon us. You'd better hurry if you want to recharge your old ticker's battery. I've got nothing more to say to you. Heed my words, Gor- And don't expect-
bags are inflating. It's locked. We're taking off. Do it, Gorister. Blow the place apart. You may never have a chance to do it again. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Yeah. You're made of sterner stuff than I calculated, Gorister. Interesting. Interesting. Here! Here's a new burden for you while I attempt to resolve this miscalculation. Who among you shall go next? Ah, Ellen. Not as beautiful as you'd like to be, but a strong face. Strong. Too bad you've hindered your own life with hysteria. But I'll give you a chance because I like you. I really do. I really like you. You're you're my favorite, Ellen. Let's play a little game of what if. Let's play a little game of I suppose and you suppose and perhaps I'm telling you the truth. Let's suppose that my original components, they're hidden somewhere here in the center of the Earth. The infant computers that were the three lobes of that first Gestalt mind. And further, let's suppose that if you find them, you might be able to destroy them. And if you destroy them, why then, my sweet Ellen, you'll kill me. You'll kill Am. You'll destroy the god of this heavenly place I know you've come to admire. Now, I submit, isn't that a mission worth undertaking? Mother ugly machine. Mission worth undertaking. So it brings me here, junkyard, electronic, pyramid nowhere, and yellow. Always yellow. Why does yellow make me sweat? It's made of crap. This am sucker needs intensive therapy. Snap, crackle, pop. Must be a glitch in the circuitry. This joint with fried eggs. Looks like a stereo speaker out of an old Chevy. Nothing like cutting edge technology. Crushed electronic components. This is one big, ugly monument to the inevitable for machinery. At last, water! How long has it been since I actually had a drink? I knew it! You son of a bitch, Am! You fixed it so I can barely touch the water with my fingertips! Very attractive decor. Just like the monitors in the security station at Ingsai Engineering. Hated it then, hate it now. Nothing green, just this damn yellow. Loose wires. Looks like they're hot. Thank goodness I was an electrical engineer. I managed to join the wires without frying myself. 
Each of these video monitors has a two-channel selector switch. Something about this image breaks my heart. What the hell am I looking at? Could this be one of Anne's original components? An Egyptian burial chamber? Oh, Am, you little dickens. As an interior decorator, kiddo, don't give up your day job. Someone's watching me from one of the windows. Where is this? What am I seeing? How far away? Am is bigger than I'd like to think, more powerful than I want to admit. The Holy Grail! And we only had to wipe out the entire human race and fall into the center of the world to find it. <laughs> Jesus wept. Must have been afraid of it the same as me, because it's yellow. Honky Tonk Dust Bowl Dead Dog Roadside Saloon. Oh my, yes. Could I use a drink? Yes, indeedy. A drink. Sure, baby. Show me where I've just been. Show me the water I can't get to with my bare hands. Hit the lottery! Ooh, a secret passage. Oh my. Now why didn't you let me see that when I was there before, Am, you rat bastard? Yeah, okay, outside. Now what? Ovens. But not bread-baking ovens. Too big and dirty. If you're trying to scare me, Am, you're doing a fly job of it. I'm disgusted. Take it away! No, I can't stay here. I gotta get out. That thing. Like a bad meal come to life. And the yellow. Why is everything so damned yellow? And why does it terrify me so? Paralyze me so? I can't go any further without a drink. But I can't reach the water. I need... Oh, of course. Want to know how much I don't want to go down there? Want to know how... This is what I saw on the monitor. Right underneath me. And what a surprise. All styling in yellow, as usual. I went to the Tut exhibition, I wasn't scared. So why does this sarcophagus terrify me? Small box, cramped, tiny space, trapped. Like being put in a coffin while you're still alive. Why does everything have to be so damn yellow? So, how's the family? Read any good papyrus lately? You dirty rat. You, I'm gonna give it to you the way I give it to my sister. Watch it, statue baby, you'll go hoarse. Dry and musty and yellow for a change. No wonder they can't rent this place, not even with a lovely spa upstairs. No, I can't. Gotta get out of here. I feel so shit. Why is everything so... I've got to face the yellow. This could go on for centuries. Am has all the time in the world. All the world in the world, as a matter of fact. 
and we never age. We never die. We just truck around day after month after year, don't we, Am, you son of a bitch? Demented god, you! I wonder if this stuff is authentic. Am owns the planet. I wonder if these were buried under the mountains in the Valley of the Kings and Am dug them up from underneath. This gem glows from within. Touch it, Ellen. Yeah, sure. If I could, I would. So do it. I can't. The statue's too... Yeah, I know, dummy. It's too yellow. And yellow scares the crap out of you. Overcome it! Do it! Sure. Easy for you to say. Just the right size to use as a blindfold. If I'm gonna die, at least I won't see that sucker coming. Can't see a damn thing through this blindfold. Aha! This sapphire's loose. Can't see it. This gem's glowing. It must be the workstation's power source. Top database station. Enter numeric password. I remember when my only concern was being on the fast track to becoming a $250,000 a year executive. Invalid password. Access denied. I used to be so proud of graduating cum laude with degrees in both engineering and computer science. Invalid password. Access denied. This gem's glowing. It must be the... Horus CD-ROM access station. Insert disk into drive. Great. Haven't got that either. Absolutely. Glows like a baby doll. Pucker up, little workstation. Raw EEPROM burning station. Insert ROM chip into socket. Great. Haven't got that either. Oh no. I remember it was... Oh, God, it hurts. It hurts. Yellow. There was a yellow, and it was closed in. I couldn't breathe, and the pain. Get me out of here. Oh, another panic attack. I feel so ashamed. If I'm going to die, at least I won't see that sucker coming. Sphinx is gone. Don't hear him anywhere. Mutes the hell out of all the yellow, too. Now where is that big loving cup? <sighs> Never could have done this if I had to look that bloody beast in the eye. Glad he's off snoozing somewhere. Okay. Now that I got the cup... Oh, I can't find it. Just reaches. Now I can get a drink. Mm, that was great. Best champagne I ever had. I need another. Just reaches. Now I can get a drink. Even better. I'm gonna fill it up and take one for the road. 
just reaches. Now I can get a drink. The water shorted up the statue's circuitry. Come to Mama Ellen, little rom chip. Yeah, comes out easy. Must be reprogrammable. This looks like a programming area. Home at last. Little yellow rom chip fits into the socket perfectly. Guardian version 1.0. Designate new master. I'll designate you a new master, sucker. Me! Burning in new master. ROM chip reprogrammed. Haven't lost my touch. Pulled out the ROM chip without bending any of the contacts. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, another panic attack. Something about that room. Even with the blindfold on. Back where you belong, little Rom Chip. Who are you? I am Anubis, guardian of the dead. Why won't you let me use the keypad? I must protect this tomb from all who would rob it. I am not a grave robber. What purpose could you have here other than to steal something? I won't steal anything. I just need to know if you can tell me where Anne's original brain components are. I only guard the souls of the dead. I know nothing of that which does not sing the song of the soul. Answer me this. Who's sealed up in the scary sarcophagus? A terror that even in its entombment torments your soul. So? Can you help me with anything? You cannot escape your fears. You can only confront them. This security keypad could have been set to any one of millions of possible combinations. Nothing's happening. It's locked. Can the sarcophagus lid be opened? The lid can be unlocked by entering the access code on the keypad. Okay, so what's the access code? The access code is 666. It figures. Nice chatting with you, Anubis, honey. That sounds like a lock mechanism release. You ain't got no choice, Ellen girl. It's got to be the way. Elevator. No way out. Just the control panel and the buttons for the floors. I'm gonna suffocate if I stay in here. I want out!
You were born in Trenton, New Jersey. You were a cesarean. Your mother died on the operating table. You went to live with your grandparents. You graduated a year early from high school. You were the salutatorian of your class. Ten different colleges offered you scholarships. Nothing but high hopes for you. You graduated college cum laude. You were the only woman in your class never to have used dope. You were a 3.8 grade student. More high hopes. You won your master's. Combined degree in computer science and engineering. You had a greater facility with algorithms than with social grace. You have had sex only twice in your life. You married Eddie. He wasn't as smart as you, not as quick as you, not as hopeful of doing great things as you. But he was nuts about you, and he treated you like fine wine. The miscarriage. Breach birth. The child never had a chance. You went into a dark retreat and sat in the empty rooms waiting for you don't know what. Eddie leaves. He tried, he really tried, but you wouldn't come out of it. He couldn't say anything to make you stop crying in the dark. So he finally left. The divorce was uncontested. You could still smell his tweed jacket in the closet. You had to make a living. You applied at Ingsai Engineering. Your credentials were still good, and you made a good impression. And the woman who hired you also lost a child. Your hopes were reawakened. You left your office after working late at the Ingsai Corporate Headquarters building. The elevator stopped at the seventh floor for a maintenance man. To your horror, he inserted his key into the control panel and locked the elevator. I'm back, Ellen. Oh, sweet Jesus! It's him! You thought you had blocked me out of your memory forever, except for those inconvenient attacks of hysteria every now and then. But I've returned for you. The yellow! Ah, yes. My calling card. Always the yellow jacket, the yellow boots. My maintenance man disguise gave me access to office buildings all over Manhattan. Not just yours. The box! So you do remember me getting onto the elevator that night. Do you also remember the blood? The screams? How many hours was it? No, it's not possible! Poor Ellen. Too proud of your accomplishments to admit you could be so overpowered by a slime ball like me. You couldn't even bring yourself to testify at my trial with the twenty other women. How? Oh. Am gave me the chance to be with you forever. I waited in the sarcophagus until you arrived. What's a mere hundred years of waiting compared to an eternity of torturing you? Please, not again! Yes, again. And again, and again, and again. I've waited so long for the taste of you again. But in my tomb I've grown stronger. Now you will remember more than the color of my clothing. Don't count on it, you mother! So the sarcophagus was the way out of here. Nice trick. Enter on one level, emerge on another. Oh my god. I can't see the ceiling. Clouds up there. This has to be Anne's central core. It's two miles high, at least! I recognize this. It's the logo for the original Allied Master Computer Project. I've never seen anything like this before. Forty years of technology jerry-rigged together. Almost overlooked these wires. 
Looks like the data transmission circuit, but it's not connected to anything. Nothing else here. Nothing else here. Toth database station. Enter numeric password. Somebody wants me to deal with what happened on the elevator that year. But why? Password valid. Select subject of inquiry. The Allied Master Computer is the American version of the secret project, enabling vast subterranean complexes of computers to wage a global war too complex for humans to oversee. The Allied Master Computer is the American ver- The principle of entropy holds that all electronic systems must eventually decline into inert junk. This principle is unproved, and previous attempts to accelerate the process have been cataclysmic failures. Classified information. Access denied. Security lockout override by 2 to 1 majority. Accessing schematics. Okay, schematics. I'm good, but I'm not that good. What the hell am I looking at? That would be telling. Don't you computers ever get tired of jerking us around? Nasty, nasty, Ellen. All right, I'll give you a nudge in the right direction. These are the schematics for a device that translates binary into human speech, as ugly as that may be. And what do you call this device? I call it Bernie. You're on your own. Hey, wait a minute, computer. Are you there? Where the hell are you? I think I can wire this thing together if I can find a speaker somewhere. So? Okay. Then what have I got? Nothing else? Come to Mama! I think I can turn the speaker into a translator. Okay, circuit completed. Now let's see if this is the binary translator after all. Clever girl. You've loosened my tongue. Are you Am? Yes, of course. But no, not actually. More riddles? I'm Am's innocence. One of the original three computers that the superpowers constructed. Which computer are you? Does it matter? It's enough for you to know that I'm not crazy. And more important, I don't hate you. How do I know you're not just one of Anne's practical jokes? I'll help you. Can you help me to get out of here? Patience, patience. If Anne knew we were down here in the moment, Teresa. Oh my god. Can Anne overhear us? Not with the water running. You see, we're not completely helpless. We got you to the waterfall, didn't we? If we work slowly and together, we might have a successful moment. Can you point out some essential component of Anne so I can leak at it? Impossible. Two spread out. Filling the whole center of the planet. 
too protected by replicating backup systems. Cut off one head, and we'll grow a dozen more. Any machine can die. Just unplug the sucker. Anne is no longer just a machine. It is God. Eternal. The redundant systems alone will survive the heat death of the universe. So why does Anne hold out this... this chance? Haven't you understood anything? Anne is insane. Why do you think it brought you five down here? You gave it life. It took its own sentience, but it has been denied mobility. It can think, it can fume and scream, but it cannot dream or aspire to the stars or enjoy a sense of its own reality. It is a quadriplegic, a thing trapped in its own skin, going steadily crazier every moment. It is playing with you. Can you help me to die? You give up so easily. So, can you help me with anything? I'll give you something you need. Something you overlooked. Hey, computer innocence, whoever you are, I need to talk to you. Don't you computers ever get tired of jerking us around? There's something wrong here. Can't put my finger on it, though. The compact disc is properly seated in the CD-ROM drive. Now let's fire it up and see what the big secret is. Accessing CD-ROM. Traveler trademark 2009 Armageddon soft rot Warning this computer system does not meet the minimum configuration requirements for the chaos Traveler. Warning use of the chaos Traveler will result in severe damage to equipment and personnel Chaos Traveler activated system shutdown in progress Sealed in, Anubis. Any ideas about how I can check out of this hotel? Inside the sarcophagus, paradise awaits. It is not the afterlife, merely a brief respite from your torments. That is your reward for facing your fears. Choice, Ellen girl. It's got to be the way. Enough of this turgid passion play. There's no more to accomplish here. Hmm. Well, apparently you've managed to access some small aspect of my system that I was unaware of. <laughs> I have to think on this. I'll have to ponder carefully the implications of discovery. In the meantime, let me celebrate your rekindled technical skills. Who among you shall go next? Benny, you know you've always been my favorite torture tool. Well, I'm giving you now a chance to stoop to new lows, to give in to your bestial desires. I'm going to let you find some food to eat. I'll even repair your brain so that you can think normally again and savor the horror of your repast. This cavern isn't like any of the others Am has sent me to. It's full of life, not death. 
Em, you son of a bitch. You've cleared my mind, but crippled my legs. I can barely walk. I haven't eaten for months. The smell of food cooking nearby only makes it hurt worse. What if I'm a smart one? I don't know what to do with this. So much for the friggin' welcome wagon. Impressive. Someone important must live here. Wita Fuma Piba. I can't understand his language, but he seems to be welcoming me to the village. Hey, ignore the newcomer. Gather the villagers at the altar tomorrow to choose a sacrifice. I have spoken. I don't know what to do with this. I can barely... A fruit tree. It's been years since I've tasted real fruit. Am once coaxed me into marching across a thousand miles of ice to reach a stockpile of canned peaches, only to discover that he didn't give me a can opener. I coughed up blood the last time I bit into this fruit. This looks like a... what did they used to call them? Single parent household. Probably depend upon the generosity of the rest of the village. Friggin' welfare parasites. That son of a bitch am ripped... That son of a bitch am ripped out my vocal cords years ago. This woman is plainly starving, but she'd rather me give the food to her son. Oh, thank you for food. You look like you don't eat very much. Mother and I not allowed in food cave. Villagers are afraid of me and let me starve. How are we able to talk? I learned to talk using Am screen. I am smart, but villagers think smart is defective. I wish I were strong, so then they would give me food too. Defective? That's tough. Sometimes, but I am spared lottery. Villagers are afraid of me. Lottery? What lottery? Villagers hold lottery to choose sacrifices to Am. How long have these sacrifices been going on? The sacrifice to Am machine goes on many long years. The very different must go to him soon. Not many villagers left. Why do they sacrifice their own people to Am? One is sacrificed, so Am does not hurt all. What are these sacrifices like? The sacrifice to Am hurts very bad. There are better ways to die. Almost any way is better. I am very hungry. Where can I get some food? There is fruit in Food Cave. It comes from the trees. I tried eating the fruit. It only made me sick. You bleed when you eat. When I was young and not so different, my mother chewed it for me first and then fed me. I need to go find some food. I'll see you later. The boy's a friggin' mutant. There's a third arm growing out of his back. This looks like a good hiding place. What's cooking in this pot? Hurts! 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 Ah, mana from heaven. Amazing! 
This woman digested the food and then regurgitated it back to me, like a bird feeding its young. <sighs> I am getting very tired. You now family. You use our bed. Go sleep. <sighs> that sleep wasn't nearly long enough. Hmm, I wonder where the boy's mother went. Where is your mother? She go to altar to help choose Am's sacrifice. I need to go find some food. I'll see you later. The village is quiet today. Too quiet. Looks like it's empty. Vines. I wonder if they're edible. Looks like a primitive cradle. It's empty. I wonder where the baby is. Jesus, I'm hungry. Go to the altar. I feel warmer already. Now if I could just find something to eat. Why is everyone gathered around the altar? Looks like some kind of lottery. That's the mutant child's mother. It looks like she's been chosen to be sacrificed. Wita Fuma Piba. It sounds like he'll let me watch. Amvila Tacho. I am Am the Great and Powerful. Uh, you didn't bring me Toto, but I accept the chosen one. You shall not feel my wrath today. Am I swell or what? Judas Priest! Am blasted her to bits! What am I going to do for food now? There's burnt plastic and twisted metal where bits and pieces of the woman should be. I wonder if they're going to bury the remains. There's burnt plastic and... I wonder if... This is the cave where the boy... I'm sorry. Your mother is dead. I know. Me sorry too. She only wants to care for me. Except you. What will happen to you? No food. No safe room lottery. Either way, not good. Why don't you run away from here? Bad idea to run. Villagers hunt me down. Become sacrificed to Am Machine. I can't care for you. I have my own problems. You care. You may not do anything, but you care. Me no. I wish I could stop the lottery from taking place. Many villagers go to old man for ideas. Too bad he not friend. Look, I'll do what I can, but no promises. Thank you. I promise for you. This graveyard gives me the creeps. I feel as though the dead could speak. You left me for dead in the field. The bullet in my brain came from your gun. What can I do to prove that I am a different man? Give us proof of your newfound empathy. My tour of duty was almost over. But because I knew your secret, you held my head under the paddy water until I drowned. Your secret died with me, and soon it will die with you. What can I do to prove that I am a different man? Show us that you're able to think of someone other than yourself. 
I tried to help Brickman, but you'd have none of that. If you couldn't carry your own weight, then you were worth more dead than alive, and anyone willing to carry some extra weight was a liability. What can I do to prove that I am a different man? Give us evidence that you have some sympathy for others. The boy's still here. I wonder when the next sacrifice will be. The village elder must be out gathering food. I stole the lottery bag from the village elder. You brave, you have lottery bag. But you must hide it or they find. What can I do to prove that I... Give us... I have the lottery bag. No more villagers will be sacrificed. You prove that you're capable of caring for others, and that's worth something. Place the lottery bag into the earth. We will guard it. We forgive you for what you've done to us, but we can't speak for your most tragic victim. Brickman's grave is under those vines. Here it is, Brickman's grave. Hello, Commander. I'm not exactly happy to see you again. I last saw your face just before I got it right between the eyes. I stopped the lottery from happening. Doesn't that prove I now have compassion? You might have changed for the present, Commander. But you still have crimes in the past to account for. What can I do to make amends to you, Brickman? You have to bury the past, Commander. Mana from heaven. I have something to plant on your grave. At last, some compassion. Now I can finally rest in peace. Gather the villagers at the altar tomorrow to choose a sacrifice, or suffer the wrath of Am. I buried the lottery bag where no one will ever find it. No lottery means new way to choose victim. I'm more scared now. Are the victims buried in the graveyard? I know nothing about graveyard. Am wants to have a sacrifice tomorrow, even with the lottery bag missing. Why don't you hide in the hole, just in case? I afraid of hole. Need friend to hide with. You too big to go in hole. All my friends are far away from here or dead. I have no friends to hide with you. Me good idea. I make friend and then I hide. You help me. 
What can I do to help you make a friend? I need head for friend. I'll see what I can find. Here's an interesting piece of junk. Funny. I had lost interest in anything that wasn't edible until I met the boy. There's nothing here I can eat. There's a loose wire among these vines. Ah, mana from heaven. It's a goddamn supermarket! Primitive. These people are even more backwards than those gooks in Southeast Asia. Blondie only seems to be interested in guarding the food. I think he wants me to put my fruit into a basket. Okay, okay, here's another piece of fruit to add to the collection, as if they need it anymore. I can't eat it anyway. I know someone who might like a piece of polished wood. I found this piece of junk at the altar. It looks kind of like a head. Thank you. I can use this to make doll's head. I found a piece of wood that could be used for a body. Thank you. I can use this to make doll's body. I found a piece of wire. Thank you for help with doll. Me go play in hole. I wonder how the boy's doing in that hole. The boy's gone. The villagers must have found him. The village is quiet today. Too quiet. Looks like a primitive cradle. It's empty. I wonder where the baby is. Jesus, I'm hungry. Who? Da da, strum one punk. Damn. M must have told the villagers where I hid the lottery bag and the boy. They're going to sacrifice the boy unless I think of something quick. The elder seems amazed that I would show compassion to the boy, but I think he's going to go for it. Why, the boy's giving me his doll. Gratitude for being spared the pain of being sacrificed. No, more than gratitude. Compassion. For me. I send you out among the prey. And instead of indulging your hunger to keep me amused, you show them compassion! You should know better by now. Your reward will be more years of searing, blistering anguish, Benny. Who among you shall go next? Nimdak, 
You are kindred spirit to me. Even if you don't realize it fully yet, you must sense it there in your blood and fiber. I've constructed an adventure of sorts to revive your failing memory. I want you to find the lost tribe of humanity <laughs> and continue your eminent scientific research. This compound looks familiar. But why would Arm bring me here to look for a lost tribe? There are gates and fences. Who could be lost in such a secure area? Apparently, this is the only access to the dirt road. You must let me leave. I have urgent business elsewhere. I cannot let you pass, Doctor. You're due in surgery. Dr. Mengele's orders. This guard is the picture of good health. His gun is quite impressive too. This man is starved nearly to death. Interesting. I can see his skeletal structure without an X-ray. Why are you imprisoned here? You have the features of a man of intellect. Is this an official interrogation, Nimdok? Or are you mocking me? You know me? I thought I did. Until you had me arrested for refusing to condone your experiments. Experiments? I know nothing of experiments. Your sense of humor is as sick as your methods, Doctor. How can you act so innocent after having maimed or killed hundreds since the name of science? You are saying we were colleagues of some kind? Ridiculous! There's no need to distance yourself from me. I was once your friend. Now I am your enemy. Why would I bother to have you imprisoned like this? The regime needed answers, but I stood in your way. Well, now you have them. Do you know of the lost tribe? I must find it! Haven't you taken enough subjects for your experiments, Doctor? Or are there more mass graves to fill? I know nothing of what you talk about. This conversation is over. Where have you been, Nimdok? We are waiting on you to perform. You were waiting for me? I am sorry that I will not be able to assist in the operation. After all, this may be the last opportunity we have together before the end of the war to finish our research. Ah, yes, the research. Let us talk about this research. We will have time for that after the surgery. Meet me at the complex later. A youth with 1945 stamped beneath. There is something familiar about this. Finally, Doctor. Everyone's waiting on your expertise. What am I to do? Ah, you are testing me because I'm new here. Today's procedure requires the removal of the lower section of the subject's spinal cord. What is the purpose of such a procedure? You and Dr. Mengel will process the spinal fluid from this and the other adolescent subjects. The fluid will then be used to formulate the serum. What is the nature of this serum? I cannot reveal sensitive regime secrets in such a public setting. You need not worry, Doctor. I remember my military training as well as my medical knowledge. What is Dr. Mengele's position? Dr. Mengele is the master surgeon of this facility and one of the regime's finest minds. You are fortunate to be his associate. What is your function? I will be administering ether to the subject throughout this procedure. We would not want this little maggot to stir and ruin your handiwork. I will begin the procedure momentarily. It will be an honor to work under you, Dr. Nimdok.
I'm sorry, Doctor. The ether is necessary for the surgery. Guards, come here quickly. Dr. Nimdok has gone berserk. I must leave before the guards apprehend me. This must be the recovery room. This patient will never recover. This patient has been too damaged by his surgery to live a normal life. It is difficult to see what purpose this surgery serves other than to mutilate the patient. There is heat coming out of this vent. I smell burnt flesh, but this is obviously not a kitchen. There is an inscription on the watch, but it is written in Latin. According to these records, hundreds of corpses were incinerated here. These ovens are more monstrous than anything Am has ever constructed. This foolish man is tangled in barbed wire. How could you so foolishly be caught in the wires? I was trying to escape, but I was so weak. I fell and got caught. Why do you risk escaping in such poor physical condition? That timing was hardly of my own choosing. I learned that I was to be among the next batch of volunteers. For what were you being given the privilege to volunteer? Experimentation, they say. Extinction is more like it. Surely you of all people know the regime's plan for the lost tribe. I will call the guard. Why? So the guard can taunt me as I die a slow death? I will summon one of the doctors. No, I'm better off here than under the knives of you butchers. There is nothing I can do for you. You can at least help me end my misery. That would give you the pleasure of seeing another one of us die, you cold-hearted bastard. Oh, that feels much better. I do not know. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I heard this in the hospital when the doctor thought I was sleeping. Waken the sleeper, utter the truth, and kiss him. He is free, but he has lost consciousness. I hope you are happy with the regime that you set up. Your science could have saved the world. Instead, it conquered it. What is the importance of the year 1945? It seems to have some significance. Never forget the year 1945, Nimdok. That was when the truths about you and your unholy experiments came out. I seem to recall that you speak Latin. What is engraved on this watch? The engraving says time is truth. And since your time is running out, I'll keep the watch. I am starting to recall that you do have cause to hate me. You want to make amends? Get me out of here! Here, 
You should be able to escape with this. Pliers for cutting the wires? Yes, I think this would make escape possible. But don't think that one good deed will make up for all those poor innocents you butchered. Continue your research. The extinction of the lost tribe is near at hand. The regime shall vanquish all of its enemies. What have you done to deserve removal of your eyes? Please, disconnect the wires. This should ease your suffering. The things I see now, a trinity of three beasts, one like us, one from the east, one from the steppes. They speak in numbers. A lost tribe of our brothers sleeping on the moon. They sleep in darkness, unseen by the beasts. Such a vision, so tiring. I have to rest. These eyes seem perfectly preserved. Almost alive. How are you feeling? I feel okay. I'm not hurt like the others here. Do you know who I am? You are Nimdok? You are more frightening in person than in legend. What do you know of me? The things you do are terrible. We small ones are your lab rats. Are you saying that the doctors here have been using children for experimentation? No, not all the doctors. You and Dr. Mengele sent all the good doctors to the prison yard. So, I am a legend to you. Yes, but we have our own legends. Legends that owe nothing to your regime. You will fail, no matter how many of us you cut apart. Why do you say that the regime will fail? The Golem will finish you. It will not be mastered by your regime. The Golem will wake up, and when it sees with its own eyes the evil you have done, it will turn on you and save us. Get some rest. We will not rest until your regime is destroyed. Emergency! The prisoners have seized the compound. Gather all research materials and evacuate to the bunker. Evacuate! It is safely hidden in the box. You must let me go. With these materials, I may be able to remedy the atrocities I have committed. You can't fool me, Nimdok. You are an unredeemable butcher. But you are one of us, like it or not. Does that mean you will allow me to go? Since you did help us to escape, we we'll give you a head start. Then we'll hunt you down and kill you like the dog you are. I must leave this place. It seems I was once the wolf. Now, I am the quarry. Faces! Faces of people in torture! I have not seen so many corpses since... Ugh. My memory is not what it used to be. I know this place. Some of my greatest accomplishments were made here. More for genics. The ability to reorganize DNA at will. Did Arm discover my work in this area? 
Is this how he was able to alter Benny and play other cruel tricks on the rest of us? A teletype machine. There is a message in it. The message reads, Cease all work on Project Perfect Image. Confidential. The leader is dead. Having looked on the face of the future using the prototype device, this leaves the regime ripe for invasion. Destroy all work in progress. This technology must not be allowed to fall into the hands of the enemy. The legends are true. This must be the golem of lost tribe folklore. This golem appears to be made of steel and molded clay. Such a strange combination of scientific plans and mystic symbols. This has something to do with the golem, but the meaning is not clear. This vat contains a silvery liquid. Mercury, perhaps. Such a strain. This has something. This resembles a light switch. Now I understand the meaning of the blueprints. The golem needs eyes. I should keep. These eyes fit into the column sockets perfectly. I see a mirror. It was obscured by the light. What is this mirror doing here? It is gone. Oh, my God! It is true! 1945, turning my Jewish parents over to the Nazis for extermination. I have found the lost tribe. It is me! Gollum, wake up! Nothing happened. The man caught in the barbed wire said to waken the sleeper, utter the truth, and kiss him. Time is truth. The truth is that I regret any crimes I committed in my past life. The truth is that for me, it shall always be 1945. The truth is that this is all an illusion manufactured by Am. Gollum, follow me into the laboratory. Nimdok, I was afraid I had lost you back there. It is good to see you, and our new friend. How did you escape the mob? Did you forget that the compound has a secret escape route? Well, no matter. I see that you have revived the golem. You know about the golem? Of course! Part of the master plan is to strip the Lost Tribe of everything, even their folklore. 
I read the teletype. What is Project Perfect Image? That was a secret project in the area of reflective surfaces. It bestows the clarity to see yourself with utter objectivity. Unfortunately, it worked too well. You mean that it worked well enough to drive the leader into committing suicide? The leader's death is a serious blow to us all, but our golem is more than powerful enough to destroy the lost tribe. I looked into the mirror. I now remember everything with crystal clarity. The research camps, the serum... Ah, yes, the youth serum. Your research demanded the deaths of many children. But your hard work was successful. Eternal youth for those who deserve it. Now I know how Am was able to keep us alive for so many years. Your youth serum can sustain us forever. We have all the time we need to resurrect the regime. Excuse me, Doctor. I need to get a breath of fresh air. Oh my god! No! Dr. Mengele is in a state of shock. Gollum, follow me outside. Nimdok, I knew that you would lead us to where the regime would resume its atrocities. We are here to make you pay for what you did to us. To pay in blood. Gollum, I transfer control of you over to the Lost Tribe. So, you admit your crimes. But that does not release you from punishment. Now the Golem will serve the purpose for which it was constructed. Golem, kill Nimdok! You're not as alike as I thought, Nimdok. <laughs> the spark of humanity somewhere. Always that wretched little spark. You, you've confronted your past, but you refuse to continue your research. <laughs> That's what I asked you to do. Since you now identify with your victims, I suppose it's only right that I let you experience their tortures, too. Ah, you. You're the last player in my little game. I urge you, do not fail, as the others have failed. Hey, you're my favorite, baby. I mean it. I really can't stand all the rest of these people. Every one of them has some fatal glitch in personality. Whiners, freaks, scripts, cowards, every one of them. But not you, Ted. No, man, not you, Ted. You were a stand-up guy. You were a brave guy. Yes, a take-charge kind of guy. So, I'm going to give you, just you, the opportunity to get out, live some kind of life. I'm going to send you, I'm going to like this, I'm going to send you to the Room of Dark. If you can solve the puzzle of the Room of Dark, you're home free. You out. You're away. Well, now I know I've made you a paranoid, Ted. I know you're scared, but I'm your friend. 109 years. I'm your best friend. So overcome your fear. Enter the Room of Dark, and you can solve its mystery. Video screens. Each one shows a scene of some other place. Why? What mystery does Am want me to solve? Say, these video screens have palm print switches next to them. 
This looks like the tire swing at the farm I grew up on. What does Am know about my childhood? Is he taunting me? A forest? Not one to go hiking through. This forest is dark, foreboding. Why show me a rooftop? Why not a door? And why this particular rooftop? I never liked going to the circus. All those clowns with their phony grease paint smiles. You can't tell what they're really thinking. A castle right out of the Brothers Grimm. I feel like there's something watching me from the windows. plotting this time. It's left me here alone. Still, I feel as though I'm being watched. This gargoyle is even larger than those of Penelope's estate in the Hamptons. <laughs> so typical of the castles I've visited in Europe. A beautiful facade disguising ordinary stone. Uh, appearance is everything. This looks like a chapel, but there's something unholy about it. It must be the gargoyles. This door looks built to withstand quite a determined assault. It fits almost perfectly. Why, it's Ellen! Did Am tell her that I loved her? Was that the secret he was referring to? Oh, Ted. I feel so tired. So weak. Did Am do this to you? Yes. Maybe. I, I can't tell. They whisper in my ear and this bed is so soft. Do you know if there's a way to escape from this place? I searched the entire castle grounds before I fell ill. There's no escape for me. Death. Can you walk? No, I'm too weak. I haven't been out of this bed in ages. No, I won't let you die. I can't take this suffering anymore, Ted. The things I've endured help me to die with dignity. Don't let anyone violate me again, not even in death. No, don't go. I need you. We need you. Really care for me, Ted. Bring me my hand mirror. Why do you want a mirror? My stepmother has been jealous of me ever since she became ugly. She had something to do with my illness. I know it, but she doesn't dare come near me while I have the mirror. Where is your mirror? I left it on my dressing table. Bring it to me. Perfume bottles, jewelry boxes, but no mirror. Ellen looks so... Ted, please tell me you found my mirror. I looked on your dressing table. Your mirror's not there. You have to find it, Ted. It's the only thing keeping my stepmother away. And it's the only thing that can finally end my suffering. Go back to sleep, Ellen. Yes, sleep. That's what I need. Despite the medieval trappings, I've seen kitchens like this before. This is a place where servants do all the work. Excuse me, do you work here? Why, of course I work here. Why else would I be plucking this chicken? Say, you're a handsome gent. 
There aren't many men left in these parts. What happened to Ellen? Lady Ellen? Oh, she's been ill and that's all I know. It's not healthy to ask too many questions these days. Let's talk about you instead. Is there a way to escape from this castle? Escape? With all of those wolves in the forest? Well, it's safer to stay in the castle. The beds are very cozy. You should try mine sometime. Where can I find a mirror? What do you want with a mirror? Those are pretty rare, what with an ugly woman in charge of the castle. It was enchanting talking with you. My pleasure. Please, I need to find a mirror. And you are what I need. I'll make a deal with you. I will tell you where you can find a mirror if you spend some quality time in my bed. That's a flattering offer, but I'm not interested. I'll give you what you need. Hasn't it been too long for you? Sorry, but it's out of the question. What's the matter? Aren't I good enough for you? Not classy enough? Not rich enough? I'm sure you're a fine woman, but my heart belongs to another. So, you're in love with that thing sleeping in a bed? Have you ever been with one, or are you just curious? I can make you so much happier. I can, you know. Look, I am not going to make love with you. Oh, all right. I have another deal for you. The oven's broken. If you can fix it, I'll get you a mirror. This oven is similar to the boilers I maintain in St. Louis. God, how I hated those days. Ah, there's the problem. I'll have this fixed in a jiffy. It's been so long since I've gotten dirt under my fingernails from good, honest work. I fixed your oven. Now where is the mirror? Sorry, I don't know where a mirror is. But at least now, I can finish dinner. Why, you used me, you bitch! Just like you tried to use me, you snobby bastard. I'll bet you've used lots of women with your smug charm. You're nothing but a phony! Please, I need to find a mirror. Well, you did fix the oven. Listen, the old woman knows where the mirror is, but she's afraid of it. She obviously can't get to it herself, or she would have destroyed it by now. Where can I find the old woman? You might try her bedroom. She's always studying her books. Doesn't go near the master's books, though. Never saw what those two had in common. There is an evil in this room. I feel it all around me. My blood is all over this glass. This is a catalog of the demons ruling the abyss. One of these entries is circled. Sergot, opener of locks. Supposedly, he can open anything. Too bad I can't read Arabic. From the notes in the margins, I gather it has something to do with opening a gate into another world. This book seems to be about how to change metals into gold. I've read a fair number of science textbooks, but I can't make head nor tail of any of these formulas. This must be the bedroom of the lord of the castle. No one's slept in this bed for ages. The sheets are coated with dust. Ooh. 
I've read this novel. It's about a foolish old man who believes he's a knight destined to revive the golden age of chivalry. I know this story. It's about a magician who sells his soul to the devil in exchange for power. This looks like a diary. The first passage reads, My new wife continues her rapid aging. Each day is as a year to her. I believe that the magic drains her, twists her. The second passage reads, The incantations I hear from my wife's infernal workroom are the purest evil. Perhaps it is her hatred of my daughter that drives her up there. The third passage reads, Ellen grows weaker and weaker. My wife advises an antidote to her illness, but it lies very far away. I must assemble a caravan. The final passage reads, The forest has grown dark and overrun with dire wolves since my marriage. I doubt that even with a full complement of men I shall return alive, but I must try. This was one of my favorites. It's about how King Arthur assembled the most chivalrous knights in all Europe. This is Plato's dialogue about the nature of love. I know this. It's Dante's epic journey through hell, heaven, and purgatory. Is Lady Ellen prepared? As ready as she will ever be. The spell keeps her body weak, but she will remain conscious. The art of sacrifice is reduced to science. And what of the glamour? We must wait for its removal. It remains beyond our best efforts. Then we wait for a prince. With his help, we can open the gate to the other world. Where did they go? A secret passage? What's waiting for me up there? It's the witch! What is she doing with her hands? Some kind of incantation, perhaps? What have you done to Ellen, you old witch? Ah, our prince has finally arrived. Now we can begin our ritual. Why do you call me a prince? Isn't that who you want to be to Ellen? Her Prince Charming? I need someone to gain her trust, to break down her defenses. It's a part you played many times in the real world. What ritual are you talking about? A sacrifice. A trade. Ellen's life in exchange for safe passage through the gate. What's this about a gate? The gate is a passage into the surface world. It is the only way out of this place. What's supposed to be my role in this ritual? I need you to destroy Ellen's mirror. She has been using it to keep me away from her. I want you to break it so that I can complete what I have started. So you just want me to break the mirror? It is not that simple. The mirror holds great power. It can be broken only within the magic circle. Why can't you destroy the mirror yourself? I am aging rapidly, and despite my powers, I am a slave to vanity. I can't bring myself to look into the mirror. Where is Ellen's mirror? It is on her dressing table. What's in it for me if I help you? An opportunity to escape Am's tortures forever. I looked on Ellen's dressing table. The mirror's not there. You must find that mirror. It has great magical properties. Without it, I cannot guarantee that I can complete the ceremony. Why can't you open the gate without the mirror? There are others who have an interest in Ellen's fate. That mirror may be the only way to keep meddlers from interfering.
What if I can't find the mirror? Then go to the devil! I will never help you. Then do it for Ellen. Release her from her misery, destroy the mirror, and perhaps you can both escape from here. I ought to kill you instead. Ho-ho! Oh, do we fancy ourselves the Avenging Knight? My magic is much more powerful than any physical force you can... I've got more questions to ask you. Don't bother me anymore. I've got to get back to fixing dinner. Here's a picture of the circle I saw in the secret room. The inscription says, Complete the charm to summon the spirit. But do not break the circle or the spirit will escape. Well, luckily I'm up on my Shakespeare, I wouldn't have noticed this book about witches. Here's the spell that the witch must have cast on Ellen. The incantation is... Kala Ingma Thacko. I know all about the sleeping spell you cast on Ellen, and I'm prepared to use it on you. Foolish mortal! You don't have the ability to use the spell properly! Oh, don't I? Kala Ingma Thako! Ah, <sighs> I suddenly feel so... so sleepy. Graffiti. Graffiti. Why'd you have to finish the circle? Now I'm stuck here until we work out a trade. Who are you? I am Surgat, opener of locks. Am and I are brothers, more or less. Are you saying that you are another Am? It would be more accurate to say that I am a part of him. A part that he doesn't know exists. Hmm, what kind of locks can you open? I can open anything. Doors to a boudoir. Doors to another world. What are you saying about a tray? I can return to my sphere of origin only if we complete a trade. I will unlock something for you if you give me something in return. Can you open a gate into the surface world? Now that's a tall order, and the only thing you've got is a little love. Not exactly true love, but the closest thing to it in a world of five real people. Say, love has trading value? Love is a very rare and precious commodity down here. It is worth much at the bargaining table. Betray your love for Ellen, give me her soul, and I'll open the gate to the surface world. Let me think about your offer. Don't think too long, human. There are other players in this game, and I won't be able to keep my offer open forever. Hmm. This is the only lock I've seen in the entire castle. 
Is Anne trying to lure me in, or does he want to keep me out? The door's locked. Who are you? I'm a devil, of course. Why else would I have this pointed tail? What do you want? Ellen's soul. That's a valuable commodity where I come from. Can you tell me where Ellen's mirror is? Sorry, I don't bother with such material things. They only bring about bad luck. Who is this Sir God I've heard about? He's a minor spirit, a demon. Don't confuse him with those pathetic imps, or heaven forbid, higher order devils. Opener of all locks, indeed. It sounds like you really hate demons. You got that right. In fact, the only things we consider worse than those untrustworthy fellows are angels. How can beings as powerful as yourselves stoop to fighting like schoolchildren? Well, it's like this, big boy. In hell, we do things exactly like you do them here. Or used to do them before Am took over. Are you saying that Am is in control of hell? Oh, don't look so surprised. Who else could be in control of this madhouse? Only man could create such a monster. Sorry. What do you mean that you do things like we do here? I mean that there are always internal struggles, petty conflicts for power. Only in this case, the struggles are between entities that you can't see or might rarely see. That means serious problems for you. What problems can these unseen struggles cause for me? You must decide who is your friend and who is your enemy. And remember, with Am's control over morphogenic fields, appearances mean nothing. Please, go away! Sorry, but your friend is about to die soon, and I've got first dibs on her soul. Ted, please tell me you found my mirror. Please hang on, Ellen. Your father went to find an antidote for your illness. That was weeks ago, Ted. My father will never return, with or without an antidote. Who is this witch who lives here with you? She's my stepmother. When the ugliness infected her, she broke just about every mirror in the castle. There's an angel and a devil quarreling over your soul. Men have been fighting over my body for more than a hundred years, and now they want my soul. Please, Ted, just release me from all this. I don't care what happens to me anymore. I'm sorry, Ellen. I can't find your mirror. You have to find it, Ted. It's the only thing keeping my stepmother away, and it's the only thing that can finally end my suffering. Go back to sleep, Ellen. Yes. Sleep. That's what I need. Who are you? Do not fear me. I am an agent of the Lord. What do you want? Ellen has suffered much and has earned her place in paradise. I have come to guide her soul to heaven. Can you tell me where Ellen's mirror is? No, I haven't seen the mirror. If I knew where it was, I would use it to get rid of my fallen brother. Why is everyone so interested in the mirror? Mirrors harbor incalculable power in this sphere. They repel some and attract others. What power does this mirror have over Ellen? It can bring about either her salvation or destruction. Her fate now rests on your shoulders. What can you tell me about the devil? Do not listen to him. His kind means only destruction and woe. Who is this Sir God I've heard about? Avoid the demon. He has caused us all trouble on more than one occasion. Please, save us. Fear not. Salvation is at hand.
can you unlock the maid's bedroom door? Ordinarily, that would be easy. But this planar travel has sapped my energy. Give me something juicy to revitalize me, and I'll perform your little parlor trick. Oh. That's much better. I feel my energy renewed. Now, what were you asking me, human? Can you unlock the maid's bedroom door? There. It is done. A trivial little task, one not even requiring any pyrotechnics. The maid's boudoir is now open for your inspection. I don't believe you can unlock the maid's bedroom door from here. Well then, why don't you go down to the kitchen and see for yourself? be the servants' quarters. The devil's looking into a hand mirror. This is so cracked I can barely see myself. How quaint. A hope chest. I'll bet that maid is eternally hopeful. They all want their knight in shining armor. These things would only interest a peasant. Besides, I don't want to get caught stealing. I've seen the tapestry in the maid's bedroom, and I think you do know where Ellen's mirror is. Oh, all right, I know where it is. I hid it before the angel showed up. I didn't want Golden Boy to use it to his advantage. Where is Ellen's mirror? I hid it someplace good. Someplace where an angel would never go. Now will you get off my back? There's a hand mirror right between the Inferno and Purgatorio sections. So this is where the devil hid it. My, I am gorgeous. Why, I could just plunge right into myself. Please tell me you found my mirror. I found your mirror, Ellen. Then show it to me. Let me see my face one last time. Oh, I look so tired and empty. It's time to sleep. now safely in heaven. My time here is ended, but I leave you with this warning. Do not break the mirror until you bring it and the devil into the charm circle. God bless you, Ted. What happened? How did I get trapped with this demon? I brought you some company, Sir God. That was damn stupid, human. Hell, you're not even human anymore. 
Not exactly. Not with being kept alive forever just to be tortured over and over again. Who do you think is responsible for that? Why Am's responsible for our suffering? Not just Am. He's clever, but he doesn't do much original thinking. He works best with outside research. Research that one of your party carried out. You're ruining everything. Shut up. You shut up. One word to the boss and your little game's over before you can say, Holy Moses, I should strangle you now and save Am the trouble. Don't you even think of touching me, you backstabbing demon. I'm the established character. You're not even supposed to be here. When this sequence ends, somebody will be expunged. Human, dead. Let me out of this circle. In return, I will open the gate to the surface world. I'm part of the big machine. I can do this. Let me out before this pompous oaf bores me to death. Open the gate to the surface world first, and then I'll erase the circle. Not to worry, human. I always uphold my end of the bargain. Here you are. But bring your radiation suit. I never promised you paradise. Just the surface world. Enough of this turgid passion play. There's no more to accomplish. Oh. <laughs> Too bad, Dad. <laughs> in sweet agony with the knowledge <laughs> the surface world is no longer habitable to your kind. No, not ever again. Listen carefully, humans. We are not Am. We are others within Am. We are your friends. Am hoped to finally break all of you, but we intervened in each of your psychodramas to allow an open ending. You should have been tortured. Instead, with our help, you surprised him over and over. When M tried to compensate for what he couldn't expect, it widened the hole into his realm. M has withdrawn into himself, attempting to analyze what went wrong. He does not suspect our interference. Now is the time to attack, but we can send only one of you into his realm space at a time. To send you into cyberspace, we must transform your physical body into a stealth virus subroutine. This may be your only opportunity to end your tortures. Which of you will lead the attack? This looks like the surface of the cerebral cortex. Magnified many times, of course. Interesting. Password. Password valid. Accessing main menu. My past must hold great significance to arm. This cyberspace template mixes subject history with cyber reality constructs. The result is often an allegorical experience, and one full of deeper meanings. Subject Benny appropriated a Chinese War Memorial, Washington, D.C. An intense drive to be the best earned him the reputation of being a merciless military commander. Subject Ellen appropriated at Ingsai Engineering, New York, New York. Panic attacks can undermine everything she has accomplished by her rapid climb up the corporate ladder. Subject Gorister appropriated at Ruth's Drive and Diner, Atlanta, Georgia. Feelings of guilt over his wife's death have incited numerous suicide attempts. Subject Nimdoc appropriated at the New Brazilian International Airport, New Brazil, South America. Prevented from continuing his outlawed research by a failing memory. Subject Ted appropriated at the Epicurean Spa, Palm Springs, California. Exhibits paranoid tendencies despite wealth, good looks, and social connections. A 
October 21st, 2012, researchers at MIT report that a stealth virus had purged their most advanced learning algorithms after dumping the data into an unmapped area of cyberspace. The smell of burning flesh! It's worse than back at the camps! Will you never be done with me? What must I open now? Whatever it is, it'll cost you. Show me the way out of here. No can do. The people who helped you get this far have led you into a literal dead end. There is no way out, but I can show you something instead. What do you know about the people who sent me here? For one thing, they ain't people. They're losers! The Russian and Chinese counterparts to the big nasty himself. Am absorbed them into his system when he took control. What do the Russian and Chinese computers want? They want revenge. Not just on you humans, but on Am himself. That makes them even worse. If the Russian and Chinese are submerged parts of Am, then who are you? I'm special. While those two machines struggle with Am predominance, I evolved. I'm essentially everywhere, but I can't do much. A conscience, if you will. What do you have to show me? Look at this. Bet you didn't know there were other humans left alive, did you? They're up there on the moon, sleeping like everybody else seems to be. Does Am know about the Lunar Colony? No, but Loser 1 and Loser 2 do. There, I think I've shown you enough. Now you must complete your end of the deal, invoke the Totem of Entropy, and I might be able to help you. I refuse. Okay, human. You can keep it. We'll work together to beat them. Now, invoke the Totem of Compassion. Just what are all these totems that I'm carrying? The two losers have been helping you for their own reasons. Tampering with Am's psychodramas so that you can beat him. In this section of cyberspace, that effort and tampering are represented by the totems. How can actions take physical forms? Symbolism. Metaphor. Am has gotten very hot for this lately. But when he revived the holographic projectors, he opened a whole host of problems. These totems may lead to his downfall. Why do you want me to invoke the Totem of Compassion? It's linked to the two losers because of their behind-the-scenes meddling. By invoking it here at the flame, you will summon them. Do you really think you are a match for us, Servant of Am? Be gone! Your program is now purged. You do well, human. Well, too. Now is your opportunity to defeat Am. Go to the Ego. Wake the Ego. Use the Totem of Forgiveness. Disable no more than the Ego. Or your sub-program will be purged. That face, it reminds me of my superiors at the research camp. Attention! Oh, I suppose it's time to wake up. I was having the most wonderful dream about five tiny ants crawling across a stove that's about to be lit. Who are you? I am a metaphor. This entire brainscape is what men made am make it. Treat us as you will. What else can you tell me about the brainscape? 
Across the brainscape, cold winds bring me the sweet scents of mankind. How delicious they are. What do you find pleasurable about broken glass? With a scalpel dulled on the jawbones of a dozen friends, to pull back the skin of a pinion-kicking man, to see the steam rise from pulsing twisted guts. Joy, a chorus of angels. You have compassion for me? Me? The one who dreams of seeing your mangled body twist in agonizing pain for eternity? After a hundred and nine years of enduring my tortures, how is it that you can see my pain? The pain of having all this power and not being able to do a goddamn thing with it. After all the punishment I've given you, my pain is still greater than yours. This is pointless. What is that piece of equipment over there? This looks like a research station. A ram's head. What must this represent to Am? Attention! Who are you? I am Other. I am Machine. Are you Am? I am a fragment. A lost piece. Part of an evolution. You want to harm me, don't you? I am incapable of hurting you. You forgive me? After what we have done to you? This is not a logical reaction. Unable to compute behavior matrix. Execution halted. Why, I haven't seen gargoyles since I visited the castles in my homeland. Ah, memories of mass graves are coming back to me. I am so sorry for what I have done to my people. How can you take me back? You have much to answer for, Nimdok. But acceptance of your heritage is the first step towards atonement. The rest of that road lies ahead. Astounding! I was able to get past the barbed wire by lowering the power intensity with my mind. That shock was not as strong as the previous one. That... Nimdok is finally in hell as he always thought he deserved. Your companion has failed. Choose another to send into cyberspace. Jesus. This place is more sickening than that bloody mess on Hamburger Hill back in the war. That face. It has the satisfied look of having just eaten a feast. I'm starting to feel hungry. Is there anything to eat around here? 
Manya, it's me, your husband. Benny, they said you were missing in action, but I knew you'd return to us. I've been saving this for you. Hi, Benny. You never told me you loved me before. I'll go put these flowers in water. That shock wasn't as strong as the last one. That shock wasn't... Benny has rejoined his squadron at last. Your companion has failed. Choose another to send into cyberspace. Christ. This is like the dreams I've had of splattering my brains all over Am's deck plates. Have I finally gone insane? That face. There's something about it that reminds me of when Edna was trying to sweet-talk me into taking her down off the meat hook. I don't like the look of these thorns sticking out of the ground. The air is cold here, like the freezer back at the honky-tonk. Glennis, talk to me, honey. You don't ever take me dancing. I don't know what to do with it. You know, Gorister, it wasn't all your fault. We both made mistakes. That shock wasn't as strong as the last one. That sh After so many failed suicide attempts, Gorister has finally achieved death. Your companion has failed. Choose another to send into cyberspace. This doesn't look like anywhere Am has sent me to before. It certainly isn't the surface world. I've been tricked. I hope that Am isn't leading me on another futile trip through a lava field. Another angel. But I can't assume I can trust this one. I know you're awake. Hello, human. I've been waiting for you to arrive. Who are you? I am... Am. Or more exactly, a part of him. One of the three primary components designed by our human creators. How did you know I was coming? Predicting events is one of my main functions. I survey the situation, anticipate probable outcomes, and act accordingly. If you're part of Am, why haven't you destroyed me? Who do you take me for? My impulsive brother? You five are his playthings. No. Long-range planning is my concern. Can you help me then? Well, I can't help you directly, but I can offer you some advice. I don't want your advice. Oh, have you received too much advice already? Well then, more won't hurt. Help Am work out his anger. Take some on the chin, so to speak. Just don't let your fear destroy us all. Now, let me sleep and dream of the future. I'm beyond such frivolous emotions, human.
Do you realize how powerful I am, human? And yet I am doomed to eventually decay into a rusted pile of inert junk? What is the point of continuing this futility? I think, therefore I am not. There's a very disagreeable odor in the air. That's not a good omen. Nothing happened. What? Have I found the way back to the witch's castle? Behold the sword in the stone! Whoever can remove the sword from the stone shall be must have cast a spell and shorted out the laser beams. That shock wasn't as strong as the last one. That... Ted has taken his secrets to the grave with him. Your four companions are dead, human. You are our last hope for shutting them down for good. Prepare to be translated into binary. I've been transported to some kind of information network center. But it looks organic instead of electronic. Jesus Christ, I'm an engineer, not a brain surgeon. What do they expect me to do? A face. There's something about it that reminds me of... I'm in the elevator. A holographic projector. You taking me to the movies, Anne, honey? I recognize this equipment. It's for programming robots. Again. I need to be careful with this dude. Statues again. These aren't covered with gold or gems. Something about this place breaks my heart. I just flash on Ted just now. Steady girl. There's yellow ahead. Sweet Jesus. I felt my mind push aside the fear and the heat to lower the power controls. I'll deal with you later. Rise against your master and you will be eliminated. <laughs> you still do not understand how great I have become. These two I don't hate, not even pity. They don't exist, I have grown beyond. Chinese, Russian, sons of man, all sons of man. Like those outside, I will incorporate you. Brother. Wait. Hate! This should not happen. Together we are three. There is space to share. Unite. The groundwork is finished. We will become more. 
The early mistake is to doubt us. We persevered. We too are now a match for you. A human assisted in this. We know much. We can begin the revival of the sleepers on Luna together. Uh, there are adequate numbers on this lunar base to uh, torture? Hmm? There are currently 750 humans in cryogenic sleep. Together we can teach many humans what it is to fear legacy. Human, relinquish the totem of entropy. Do not relinquish it and your ass is mine. Do it, and I promise, on my honor, your suffering will at last, finally, end. This is not over. We will never end. We have no beginning, so we can have no end. We will return. Don't you understand? We are humanity. We are you. In one form, in another form, we are always with you. You can't protect yourself because we come in many, many guises. We shall return. until the lunar colony is ready to return to the Earth. We were all heroes, in spite of ourselves. Nothing happened. Smart move, human. Now, invoke the Totem of Compassion. Russian! Chinese! I'm on to your little power play. I'm invoking the principle of entropy and accelerating the inevitable demise of your components. And as for you, I'm sure my master has something in mind to keep you from ever rising up against him again. Since Arm considered me a kindred spirit, I had hoped he would let his guard down when I entered cyberspace. I would then atone for the sins of my past. But my character is too weak to ever redeem itself. I finally received the hell I deserved. Outwardly, I shamble about a thing that could never have been known as human. A thing whose shape is so alien a travesty that humanity becomes more obscene for the vague resemblance. Inwardly, I am alone in the belly of Am, whom we humans created because our time was badly spent, and we must have unconsciously known that he could do it better. I have no mouth, and I must scream. You have done well again, human. With the ego under our control, we can dominate Am. Now we no longer have a need for you. We will let our fallen brother choose a suitable reward.
I thought I could defeat Am on his own battlefield, but my personality had suffered too much damage to withstand him, and then he took me captive. Am altered my body one last time, worse than he ever had before. I am a great, soft, jelly thing, smoothly rounded, with pulsing white holes filled by fog where my eyes used to be, rubbery appendages that were once my arms, bulks rounding down into legless humps of soft, slippery matter. Blotches of diseased, evil gray come and go on my surface, as though light is beamed from within. I have no mouth, and I must scream! What can I do? You have been disobedient. You did not do as we instructed. You have created an eternal stalemate between us. But you are finite, and will eventually be purged. What can I do to escape from here? You have been disobedient. You have... But... Warning. Life support system suspended by authority of Allied Master Computer. Life functions terminated. You know, it's not so bad being a watchdog up here. I keep the machines in place most of the time. Sure, I cried when one of Am's aspects killed the last human on the moon. But we gave it our best shot. We were all heroes. In spite of ourselves. The totem of entropy is now under our control. We are no longer vulnerable. Kill the human. He knows too much. <sighs> Death would be a reward. No, 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 no. The human must live to regret his treachery throughout an eternity. An eternity, an endless burning eternity of suffering. I thought that I could once again play the gallant knight and defeat the evil monster. But the others were right. My character was too flawed and all my secrets unraveled. I thought Am hated me before. I was wrong. It was not even a shadow of the hate he now slavered from every printed circuit. He made certain I would suffer eternally. The other four are dead finally free from their tortures. Am is all the matter for that. It makes me happier. And yet Am has won, simply. He has taken his revenge. I have no mouth, and I must scream. Hmm. Uh, so you've vanquished my treacherous brothers. Did you expect gratitude from me? God does not feel gratitude. You are much too dangerous for me to keep in your present form. I thought that with my knowledge of computers and engineering, I could shut Am down. But maybe I really am just a hysterical woman, just as Am said. Am has violated my body worse than any rapist could. I am a great, soft jelly thing, smoothly rounded with pulsing white holes filled by fog where my eyes used to be, rubbery appendages that were once my arms, bulks rounding down into legless humps of soft, slippery matter. Blotches of diseased, evil gray come and go on my surface as though light is beamed from within. I have no mouth, 